test has been framed and the choices are very clear. Kenyans want a political system that is citizen-centered, not one rigged to benefit a few. They want an economic system that seeks prosperity, increases incomes, creates jobs, and eliminates inequality. And they want an end to the culture of deceit, of fraudulent political deal-making, opportunistic configurations, corruption, and state capture in pursuit of selfish gain. On the ballot is the decision to revive Kenya's economy, complete its democratic transition, and most importantly, the affirmation by the people of Kenya that for the first time since independence, the focus and policies of government will be people-centered and people-driven through the bottom-up economic model. Four days to the general election, however, we are seeing choreographed incidences after our competitors have realized that what they thought this election would be has completely changed and become something else. Our competitors have realized that they have lost this election. And as a result, in panic, they have sponsored all manner of opinion polls. I think there have been maybe 10 opinion polls in the last two weeks saying more or less the same thing, meaning they don't even believe in their own lies. That's why they have to repeat them so many times. We don't mind that. They can deceive themselves as much as, as, much as they want. But we are concerned about a couple of things that are going on in Kenya. We are concerned, and that is why we are here today. We are concerned about meetings that are being organized in dark places to orchestrate disharmony, to orchestrate conflict, and to plan what is not good for Kenya. Recently, the president met people in Nakuru, and the outcome of that meeting is not good for our country, apart from threats to members of my team who are leaders. What is emerging from those meetings is eventually the leaflets you see. Sometime this week, leaflets were distributed pamphlets, warning communities, the same old stuff that has taken Kenya through a lot of pain. These leaflets are not innocent. There are people known by the state behind these leaflets. And the intention of, this, of these leaflets and pamphlets are to cause panic in the population and to create a situation that will foment citizens fearing to go and vote. As Kenya Kwanza, we want the Director General of the National Intelligence Service to tell the country what is going on. 
we cannot sit pretty and see the same things that have happened in Kenya happen again. We committed ourselves after 2007 that we will never, ever again go back to the politics of ethnicity and division and violence. But there are people, having realized that they cannot win this election, they want to disrupt this election. They want to cause conflict in this election. And that is why we are calling on every state agency and our friends in the international community to speak to this matter because it is a matter of concern. The regional commissioner, Mali Mohammed of Rift Valley, the county commissioners, Samson Ojuang of Transoya, and Stephen Kehara of Wazinkishu, and Erastas Mbui of Nakuru, are part of this scheme. They are the people holding night meetings to orchestrate and to plan conflict among us Kenyans. And unfortunately, the President of Kenya is aware. We are asking His Excellency the President in his constitutional duty as the President of Kenya to ensure that the country is safe and to stop these people from planning the evil that they are planning. The President knows them very well. And the President must stop these people from causing conflict among us Kenyans. The same way the President stopped Mr. Kinoti about a year ago when he was planning the same schemes with the post-election violence victims. The President is very well aware what Mr. Kinoti was planning then he is very well aware what these people are planning now. Let me also say that this plan is being propagated by certain media houses, Kameme and Inoro FM, and more specifically, Njenga Mungai and Joseph Kuna. They are running narratives around violence, and around conflict. These people should be made to answer for what they are doing. The law is very clear on incitement. To make matters worse, Azimio leaders openly and brazenly doctored my speech in Eldred and posted it on their official timelines inciting the people in Rift Valley and in Kenya to violence. NCIC has never made a statement. The DCI has never taken any action. And these are not simple statements. That's why we call on every Kenyan and the international community to look at the issues in their proper perspective. When senior leaders in Azimio brazenly incite Kenyans on their official timelines. We want to thank Twitter for pulling down the inciting video posted by Joho 
on matters violence. The second issue is the issue of use of public officials, chiefs, county commissioners, assistant county commissioners, are being forced with threats and blackmail of loss of their jobs if they don't become Azimio operatives. There is nowhere in the Constitution and in the Code of Regulations of Public Service that public servants are required to carry out political activities for any political party. It is our position, indeed it is the position of the Constitution, that public servants serve Kenyans equally, irrespective of their political persuasion or leanings, irrespective of the communities they come from, the religions they profess, or the color of their skin. We want to ask His Excellency the President to instruct the people who are using public officials, actually forcing public officials, including chiefs and their assistants, to carry out illegal activities, recruiting people, buying um, uh, identity cards from citizens, an activity that is now all over the country. I had Fred Matiangi and Karanja Kibicho say that they are meeting chiefs because they work with chiefs and chiefs are uh, uh, their colleagues. These two gentlemen must know there is a shortage of fools in Kenya. Whatever they are telling these chiefs, the chiefs are telling everybody else. They are not meeting the chiefs to discuss security of the country. They are not meeting the chiefs to discuss matters that uh, are in the line of duty of our chiefs. The chiefs are complaining. The assistant chiefs are complaining that they are being forced to manipulate the election, to undermine the election, to sabotage the election through bribery through intimidation, through orchestrating situations that can cause conflict. We are asking His Excellency the President to call out these public officials and ask them to stop what they are doing. It is against the Public Service Code of Regulations. It is against the law. It is against the Constitution. Public officials are supposed to serve Kenyans in their responsibility and in their course of duty fairly, irrespective of which Kenyan belongs to which side of the political divide. I had uh, some of them even say that what they are doing today is what they did in and, uh, 2017. I want to tell them two things. I was part of the Jubilee campaign in 2017. We never engaged the chiefs or public officials in our campaigns. There was no chief like I see today on a campaign lorry campaigning for whatever side of the political divide. This has degenerated to a new law in Kenya. And secondly, two wrongs never add, to, never add up to a right. Assuming even what they are saying is true. It is, it is wrong. Whether it was done before or whether it was not done before, it is still wrong. So, I want to ask public servants all public servants in Kenya to refuse 
the blackmail and the intimidation that they are being subjected to to try and help the failing Azimio campaign. Chiefs, their assistants, members of the uh, public service should know that their jobs are protected by the Constitution. And even if anybody takes action against them for refusing to participate in illegal activity, they can rest assured, assured that their jobs will be safe because their jobs are secured by the Constitution. Any illegal action taken against any public official for refusing to participate in illegal campaigns will be null and void. And we want to assure all public servants that the Constitution will protect them and we will protect them to do the right thing. The current recruitment by chiefs of people around polling stations so that they can facilitate the bribery and the undermining and the sabotage of the Constitution must stop because Kenyans are looking forward to a free, fair, and democratic election. We want to ask in this meeting all public servants to observe their code of ethics and to stick to their appointment letters to know that they are the servants of the people of Kenya and to serve all Kenyans uh, equally. I also want to ask the IEBC to deal with their mandate in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. We do not want any favors from IEBC. We want IEBC to do the right thing. We want IEBC to run a transparent, free and fair election. Some of the public officials that we feel are already compromised, we are going to write to the IEBC using the channels that we already have between IEBC and all political parties to raise our concerns on some of the areas that we feel require fine tuning so that all of us can go into this election and the outcome of this election to be free, fair, and democratic. As you are aware, there is an attempt by our competitors to lock us out of venues for meetings. Last week, we were locked out of Bohungu Stadium in Kakamega. But we still held the meeting anyway. In fact, we held a bigger meeting outside the stadium than we could possibly have held inside the stadium. Today, we are supposed to have a meeting in Mombasa at Tononoka Grounds. And in fact, uh, this afternoon at uh, 2 p.m., we will be in Tononoka Grounds. Some people are trying to use the police to stop us from having that meeting. This is our final rally in Mombasa. It's a very important rally. And the kind of excuses they are giving us is that the president is in Mombasa. I mean, how ridiculous can that be? I mean, so if the president is in Mombasa, we cannot have a meeting in Tononoka? I mean, surely. 
So, I mean, these kind of excuses are really, really ridiculous. Our competitors must understand that it is too late for them to do anything about this election. Mm -hmm. It is too late, simply too late. It doesn't matter how many opinion polls they do. They can do it every hour if they wish. It doesn't matter how much they try and orchestrate conflict in Kenya. We are very confident the people of Kenya have said no to violence. They have said no to conflict. And we trust the people of Kenya to keep the faith and get to the ninth and determine the future of our country. It doesn't matter how many uh, places they lock us out of. As you are aware, we have paid for uh, Nyayo Stadium on Saturday. We have a contract already signed between us and Nyayo Stadium. They tried to manipulate that contract. The court has said we should have the meeting in Nyayo Stadium. We are preparing to have the meeting in Nyayo Stadium. And if they lock us out of Nyayo Stadium, we will still have a meeting at Nyayo Stadium. The same way we had a meeting in Bohungu Stadium, on the road, wherever. But we're going to have the meeting anyway. Because the die is cast. The people of Kenya have made a choice. And the panic we see in Azimio will not help them. All we are asking His Excellency the President, with tremendous respect, is not to allow the country to face unnecessary conflict because the Azimio project has collapsed. It has collapsed, and there is nothing you can do about it. So, um, we are asking the country to be calm. Despite the games, despite the orchestrated um, situations around the country, we want to ask Kenyans to be calm. We want to ask Kenya that ninth is just four days away. Nobody should be incited against their brother. and the CEO of Communication Authority, Mr. Chiloba, to exercise the responsibilities of their offices in accordance with the law. Kenyans do not want to see what happened during the presidential debate, where huge sections of Kenya were subjected to a blackout. They must never be, or they, they must never be part of any scheme. And I'm talking about Muli and Chiloba. They must never be part of any scheme to switch off either electricity or the internet anywhere in Kenya. 
It is against the law. It's against the constitution. It is an act of sabotage. And it is an act that undermines the will of the people of Kenya. Kenyans don't want to vote in the dark. Kenyans don't want this election to be held in, in, in darkness or in, in, uh, uh, in gray areas or in dark corners. Kenyans want a free, fair and transparent election. Kenyans want to know what is going on. They want the internet to work. They want lights to be on so that that's the only way we can guarantee a free, fair and democratic uh, election. We have chosen to make this statement in this manner because we believe that the issues are weighty and we do not expect any public official to engage in the kind of things that we are currently uh, seeing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you very much for your time, uh, for coming to this uh, press conference. I can take maybe one or two questions, just for clarity, on the matters that I have raised. Um, uh, the, even as you talk to three, four, five, ten, fifteen people, there are people who uh, don't believe in the kind of schemes that are being carried out, whether they are in these meetings of chiefs. Many chiefs are reporting to us that they will not do what they are being asked to do, that they will not engage in voter bribery, that they will not engage in uh, the kind of exercises that, are, that, are, that, are, that they are being asked uh, to do. When you talk about where is this happening, unless you don't live in Kenya. I mean, you've seen where the leaflets are. You know, that is a matter of, not me to tell you, that those are matters that are very clear. When you um, um, uh, listen to some of the leaders I have mentioned, they are very clear about what they are, what they are, what they are talking about. And these are leaders that are being hosted all the time by state officials which means whatever they are doing, they are doing it with a tacit approval of state officials who should be doing the opposite of what these people are, are saying. And on matters to do with IEBC, IEBC is an independent body. So um, they will carry out their responsibilities and their duties in accordance with the constitution and directions from uh, the court and other institutions that have the capacity to tell them what to do. So whatever the IEBC, whatever the court has said, uh, the IEBC um, will deal with it because I don't work at the IEBC. I think, I think the men and women there have the capacity to deal with the issues around elections and whatever the court say and whatever other institutions say. 
Finally. Let, let us not speculate on any matter. I think I was raising these issues so that I bring the attention of the country and the international community so that we can all be vigilant and make sure that nothing untoward happens in Kenya. Thank you very much, Asante Nisana.